good evening everyone today we have asif sir with us who will take us through the data analytics uh, in excel so we will go, go through the entire presentation on data analytics today uh, which will have usage relating to the excel and for uh, q and a we will open our whatsapp group where you can post your comments and sir will reply basis your comments and questions if any on the whatsapp group over to you asif sir thank you mr adik and uh, good evening everyone uh, i hope i'm audible to everyone and uh, i can see some messages about adding you all to the whatsapp group so i would request the organizers to please uh, assist the participants uh, mr devang uh, for that um so sure. we will be we'll do that, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so all right. Anything else? I'm just just going through the questions right now. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, so a couple of days. Uh, so I I met you all day before yesterday at the start and. Uh, now um, i'm back to take forward the session and today we're going to do um, something called as introduction to data analytics using excel so um, we had a session on uh, statistics and data analytics in my previous uh, batch as well and we've uh, tried to modify this session with the feedback which we received uh, you know from participants and what we've done is we made it a little bit um, hands on so if you all have an uh, a laptop with an excel sheet running or something like that that's fine um, it would help you to do that uh, however do not worry i will share my excel sheets with you all okay so the sheets which i use i will actually share it with you okay so you will be able to uh, practice it even if you don't have excel right now don't uh, uh, you know do anything help this helter because many of the times what happens is when you are using this uh, mode of uh, video you know webinar doing a complete hands on uh, also could be counterproductive because you end up you know missing out on what the person is saying okay so it might be a better idea to actually see what i do and might be a good idea if you want to just you know take it down on pen and paper or you know visit it again uh, through the same link and watch the recording okay and and practice it later right now probably concentrate on the meaning of the things and then maybe you could actually practice it uh, in your own free time you know uh, at a slower pace uh, if possible so um, the first part of my session is uh, slightly uh, understanding the, the theory and then we will be actually looking at some of the uh, practical aspects of uh, you know uh, data analytics using excel um, ma majority of my sessions are all practical uh, except for one so maybe i i'll be taking five of your sessions and uh, today will be on excel um, there is one session which i'll be doing uh, on a uh, software called as orange and then a couple of them will be at the end uh, on uh, something called as power bi and uh, excel and power bi go hand in hand okay um, so power bi actually evolved um, you know from some of the things which excel was doing and we we take so we start off with excel and then move towards power bi okay so that's kind of the progression which we will be doing okay okay uh, just checking the whatsapp group and everything is okay yeah all right so we would be uh, you know uh, if there are any questions any queries any comments you can please feel free to post on whatsapp on, on the whatsapp group we will try to communicate using that uh, as we go along if everybody is comfortable with that i think i've been seeing a lot of chat messages uh, on whatsapp uh, between when saurabh sir's lecture has been going on so i think uh, all of you have been comfortable with that uh, i'm just uh, taking a couple of minutes to allow you know the remaining participants to join i can see uh, you know 70 to 80% people have joined in uh, maybe a few are just remaining but that's okay so we can uh, now start um, with the basics of you know what data analytics is and how do we you know so the, before we go into any of these you know there are so many terms which people throw around very casually nowadays you know um 
people talk about data analytics, data sciences, data engineering, uh, business intelligence, artificial intelligence, machine learning, so on, so on, so forth. Um, our endeavor has been to, during these sessions, to try to demystify them. Um, there are some uh, more technical terms which are sometimes used, depending on which kind of, you know, uh, uh, conference or which kind of group you are sitting with. And also when we go for lots of technical seminars and stuff like that, uh, conferences, um, we uh, come across terms uh, such as uh, uh, big data and uh, data mining and data warehousing and you know lots and lots of other words with data in them. Okay, uh, I will try to keep it simple. And frankly, uh, all of these are actually quite simple at the core. You know, the the idea is that as technology evolves. We try to do things better, faster, and because of technology, we are able to, you know, uh, incorporate a lot of uh, things which were in the past, you know, uh, possibly uh, very difficult to implement. Okay. Now, uh, also, there are new and new things which are coming up. So, for example, by computerization, by IT coming into the picture of running businesses, in the last uh, three decades, um, we have seen a paradigm shift in the way businesses work. Okay, every business and every aspect of business, whether um, it is finance, whether it's accounting, whether it's uh, logistics, whether it's uh, sales, marketing, you name it, across all verticals, and across the length and breadth of uh, you know the business uh, spheres, we've seen the uh, technology has completely changed the way we have been doing businesses. With the current situation, again we see a very new uh, you know upheaval of technology because of the current lockdowns and such. As many businesses and almost every business to a certain extent has had to evolve. You know the very fact that I'm sitting at my home today and give, delivering this. Uh, uh, you know, a web based workshop or come training session, whatever you want to call it, is because we have now come to realize that this is going to be the you know, the new norm, okay, of how all uh, uh, probably seminars, conferences, you know, might end up becoming, you know, it might end up becoming completely virtual because you see a lot of benefit in this. Uh, of this, um, somebody is telling you that they can't see me. So, uh, am I visible to everybody? Uh, and is the yeah, you are visible? yeah, yeah, you are yeah. visible, audible, yeah. and even the presentation is visible. Yeah, all right. Okay. Yeah. So, so, the, so the, yeah. So, if there is a problem at somebody's end, I think they they, they might be advised to just you know uh, close, uh, go to webinar once and start again. Go to webinar sometimes if, if if during connection if it has a problem it might persist so just close it and you know start again if you have a problem okay many of the times uh, switching it off and turning it on again just solves the problem so. now with the uh, new uh, it technology coming into the picture what has changed is that we've now got access to a huge amount of data Okay, now the data is the driver for all of these technologies which we see nowadays. Okay, so the nowadays when we talk about big data, when we talk about artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, business intelligence, uh, data engineering, data sciences, all of this, the heart of that te these technologies is the the availability of this huge amount of data which we are collecting most of the times uh, because of our transactions which we are doing. So, so um, I refer to, I, I will, when I go ahead, I will talk about the, in my next session about something called as uh, online transaction processing and online analytical processing. But uh, because of our day-to-day -day, uh, interactions and transactions with online, we are able to collect so, so much of in, uh, data. Now, for example, today, because of this COVID situation, I see a lot of people um, moving away from a cash society towards a cashless society using you know things like google pay or whatsapp or, or sorry paytms or whatever you know phone pay and all of that 
the the reason they are doing it is because of social distancing. So today, many of the people who are not today don't want to exchange physical currency, you know, for small uh, transactions because it again adds a uh, level of uh, possibility of contamination. Now, the reason might be different, but the the thing which is happening is th these companies and the government is suddenly not going to get a huge amount of data available on actual sales, you know, which were always being done in the uh, cash mode and were never being, uh, you know, recorded in any sense. So this entire data which will get collected and pooled needs to be analyzed, needs to be understood, and then new businesses, new um, methodologies, new policies can be framed on these. And that's where the entire process comes. Now, of course, a macroeconomic perspective is very different. Okay, so uh, today, uh, to talk about macroeconomics, I'm not here. Okay, so we will talk about some things which can be changed, which you can do, which uh, you can help in your own businesses, you can help your clients your um, and your customers uh, understand their businesses much better, um, and for that, what I thought was the easiest and the simplest tool to start off with is Excel. Okay, uh, so we will look at some of the basic examples today and we'll go on and so forth. But before I start, I will try to tell you that all of these terms which we use, you know, big, big data, analytics, technology, science, everything boils down to a simple, uh, you know, science called a statistics. Okay, so the science of statistics is at the heart of all of these technologies. Okay, so the importance of statistics in artificial intelligence and machine learning, business intelligence, I cannot, you know, begin to, you know, um, put more emphasis on these things than I could possibly can, you know, I, I would want to rather. So statistics uh, by definition is a field of mathematics that is universally uh, agreed to be a prerequisite, you know, for a deeper understanding of machine learning. Okay. And this is uh, not what I want to say. This is what the literature out there will tell you. Okay. So many people talk about uh, the latest uh, technologies in AI is machine learning. You know, the most most hyped up uh, uh, segment of AI today is machine learning. And what you would find is what allows machine learning to be the most popular uh, techniques or the uh, the family of techniques in AI to be popular today in comparison to other techniques such as evolutionary algorithms, genetic algorithms, or fuzzy or other kind of technologies which you might have heard of, you know, in uh, the yesterday's lecture, um, is because the availability of huge amounts of data, okay, in a format which is easily understandable by a machine. Okay, earlier the data used to be there. Okay, it used to be in books. So, so people who have been doing accounting for more than, uh, if, if there are people, senior senior accountants today over here who have been doing this for more than two decades, would remember the days and age where everything was in files, in physical files. Okay, and today it is completely changing. Okay, so it is completely changing from being completely physical to almost hundred percent, you know, uh, online. And that entire data now, which is sitting in your computer, sitting on your client's computers, your in the, uh, the tax departments or the government offices, can be leveraged to do so much, you know, than just you know the mundane tasks of filing returns. Okay. Now, although statistics is a very large field with um, you know huge amounts of theories, and there are lots of complicated findings and you know tools and notations and everything. Um, they're not necessarily required for practitioners, you know, so if we, if we, if, if we are machine learning practitioners, we really don't need it. Okay, so um, I, I'm, I'm sure, you know, all of y'all would have learned a huge amount of theory during your uh, chartered accountancy days and, you know, uh, which you actually now might not be really using it because there, is, there are softwares which are doing that for you. Okay, there are tools which are doing it for you, you know, you, you're not really drawing um, credit and debit columns. I, I really don't know accounts. Okay, so please uh, uh, pardon if I'm completely, you know, uh, trivial about this. But uh, 
it is i i, I definitely do not see in my organization and the organizations which i've seen uh, any more accountants being you know writing a ledger book in physical or i remember the days in when i was a child and i used to go to a bank and i used to you know stand in a queue and you know we used to go from one desk to the other and the check and check used to go to three different people before it used to be sanctioned and today a teller can just do that in a single window concept all that is possible because of technology but also it allows us to study what is happening in a much much better way okay so let me uh, uh, give you an example okay of how real data analytics can help you know so there are, there are a couple of examples which i would like to do uh, the first thing is um, you know this example of ups okay uh, you might you, you, everybody might know, know about you know fedex and ups um their ups date so they they analyze their data you know so a logistics company you know huge amount of data you know they have these rfids uh, embedded in their vehicles so they are they are trucks or they are uh, vehicles which go around delivering um, you know uh, goods they realize that in big cities like chicago new york los angeles uh, when they analyze that they could actually save a lot of time and fuel by making sure that they only take right turns okay so 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 uh, in logistics the biggest problem is what we call as the uh, traveling salesman problem or the problem where you are trying to identify if you have to deliver uh, 10 pieces of you know uh, par 10 parcels uh, at 10 different locations around the city where do you start first and which do you go to next you know so the, so putting those 10 dots on the map in a sequence is the biggest challenge for any uh, logistics company in a way that they save time and they save fuel okay and it's a very complicated process to do that google maps you know tries to do that for one, one to one locations but the moment you add 10 locations into a google map and if those locations are all within a complex uh, network of, uh, you know, in, in like a city where you have multiple paths to reach, even Google Map fails. OK, so it, it doesn't give you the best path always. So UPS, when they, when they analyze the data, they realize that the best way to, you know, save a lot of time and money and uh, on fuel was to just ensure that you always take a right turn. OK, now right turn, please understand. Uh, uh, US obviously is because, you know, they they their, their system the traffic system is completely reversed so in india it would be equivalent to always taking a left turn so when you always take a left turn you know the signals generally are open for a left okay so what they realized was if they if they if they plot, plot a route in such a way that they always take right turns they will actually travel across the city much faster and without you know uh, too much of uh, uh, traffic signals were popping up and they save a lot of money and the result was surprising you know they did that at 20.4 million miles okay were reduced in a single year so the the year they started implementing this um, uh, process where all their vehicles would only take right turns as far as possible okay then in that single decision that single one point decision changed their you know entire output of the you know 20.4 million miles you can imagine the amount of fuel at the same time the amount of time you know, so man hours and cost, which you would be saved for a single company. That's what data can help you with. Okay, so that's called decision support system, right? So again, another technical word, which again, basically decision support system, nothing but how to use data well. Okay, um, I'll, uh, you might have heard this. Um, you might have heard this one before. Um, so let me see. How many of you all know the, uh, the beer and diaper problem? Uh, let me just check. Uh, have you heard about this uh, beer and diaper thing? The the correlationship between beer and diapers. Beer, as in the you know what people drink, and diapers, which is what uh, children bear. Nobody knows the correlationship between beers and diapers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, somebody does. Okay. So. This was again uh, uh, a thing which was done at Walmart. Okay, so it was a study done by Walmart, and uh, w w uh, what they did was they tried to analyze. I think it was. I think it was. 
uh yeah so uh, it's it's not a positive correlation but more of a uh, association rule we call it uh, so the technical term which we use it is, is association so what what what's done was we uh, the entire walmart i think it is not walmart but okay for let's let's take it as walmart right now but uh, so walmart as a retail chain analyzed you know what are the two items which are always sold together you know what are the two items which are always sold together okay in the us so always sold together means the most of the time okay so so they analyze which two items pop up the most on a single receipt so they and so they ran an algorithm uh, for an for the entire you know receipts and try to identify which two items pop out you know um, the most number of times okay so everybody pr can easily predict things like uh, uh, bread and butter you know or uh, you know things like that you know so uh, so those kind of things would obviously pop up but one of the most surprising things which popped out was that the two items which were sold very uh, a lot of times together in fact the the highest amount of times together was beer and diapers okay now that was a really funny at the same time surprising uh, result of this algorithm so people really didn't understand what was going on and uh, then walmart uh, had to employ social scientists to understand what was this you know phenomenon why why was the data right or was it something you know was the algorithm not working properly and all of that and they realized that the algorithm was absolutely fine and the social scientists actually uh, came up with an explanation that it's because uh, in america uh, generally uh, the men are going to buy the diapers because the women are taking care of the children at home you know you don't have a uh, those facilities uh, as much in india as we do because there, there are not not too many joint families and stuff like that so they realize that men are the ones who are generally entrusted with the duty of di buying diapers for the kids and whenever they end up going to these uh, stores they because they're going and these stores would have you know peers also available they the men would always buy something for themselves and that would generally be beer therefore uh, there is a huge correlation uh, rather an association between uh, these two items being always sold together and then the, comes the decision of what to do with this so now this is information which data analytics can give you okay but a decision support system is something which is the next level where where what do you do what is what do you do with it okay so what how do you move from analytics to intelligence okay business intelligence now so to move it from business to business intelligence you need to decide something to do with it okay so now what could be the possible uh, options for us to do so what can we do with this data if we know that you know beer and uh, diapers are sold together what can we do with it? any idea what can we do with beer and diapers being sold together Yeah, so uh, I can see some of you all uh, coming up with, uh, you know, brilliant strategies kind of, you know, you can put them together in the store, you know, next to each other uh, so that uh, whenever the person buys beer, he can remember to buy diapers or when he's buying the diapers, he can remember to buy the beer. So the association is stronger and automatically, you know, you end up increasing your sales of your beer and your diapers. Okay, um, that's a good strategy. Another is you could come out with, you know, uh, combo plans i don't know how it would look like if you say that you know if you buy uh, three packets of uh, diapers we'll give you uh, you know uh, a bottle of beer or you know a few cans of beer for free or if you buy beer we'll give you diapers for free you know uh yeah. i have both in the same line visual visual merchandisers to place these two products in apt manner yeah so you could you, we could do that right and uh uh, Mr. Tejas, I think uh, says keep it opposite to each other. Yeah, uh, that's uh, uh, what a, you know. I would I, I, we always uh, make fun of this. You know that in the in the in the US, if you, if if that store is run by a Gujarati, you know because there are lots of uh, Gujaratis out there, um, 
you know the typical um, indian gujarati mentality will say and i can say this because i i am a gujarati you know so i, I my mother tongue is gujarati so I, so no disrespect no, no disrespect to anybody um, you know uh, and we, we we come from an entire family of merchants and traders so uh, i'm the only one in uh, education so we the the, the most uh, you know, uh, Gujarati thing to do, the Indian uh, thing to do, enterprising thing to do, would be to put both of these things at the two, you know, corners, two opposite corners of the store. So making that person actually travel, you know, to take his cart from the diaper section to the beer section or vice versa across the store and making him end up going through so many things, seeing so many things and end up making him buy more stuff. Okay. So that's another way of looking at it. Um, I, I really... You know, I really don't. Uh, I can't say what 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 would be best. Uh, people have tried all these techniques, and they have they have had different kinds of results. Okay, um, so decisions. You know, the intelligence is different, right? The, the so data interpretation and then decision, business decisions are completely different stories. So, with people need to take a decision on you know on the basis of data, but it's not always intuitive. Okay, that what the decision should be. Okay, so. Um, Going forward, uh, what you will find is statistics and data science. You know, again, two words which are routinely thrown around uh, nowadays. Uh, Walmart built a strategy of uh, putting them, you know, uh, in this in the same, you know, uh, section, you know, having a closer putting them closer they could not put it next to each other that was a little too much to do but uh, they they did uh, bring them together um, also they have done a lot of other things yeah so uh, that was the typical thing so that's where you know the gujarati joke came in you know that the, when the gujarati is found out that they are putting it together they said that's not the way to do it okay uh, so now by applying statistical and probabilistic method to their data organization can unlock patterns and insights that otherwise would have gone unnoticed okay as i said this is a pattern right this is a pattern uh, buying beer and diapers together okay uh, this was a pattern which was would not would not have been noticed if a human being had to take this decision because you can't go through millions of transaction receipts and try to identify which are two products sold together. So, these insights, are, as in the case of UPS, can lead to significant increase in revenue while driving down your costs for business. And statistics use uh, in business is currently undergoing a paradigm shift. Its scope and its application is completely different because it's no longer statistics is no longer you know the uh, domain of the uh, very few. Um, highly trained statisticians, uh, you know, uh, or actuarial sciences people, and all of that. You know, you you uh, you all would know people who uh, some of you all put proper would probably be working in actuarial sciences. I don't know, but uh, you know, you remember the days when I actually required huge amount of people to just analyze the data in financial records. Today, you click a button, and you can analyze data like that, and that's the beautiful thing about statistics now. That statistics really is no longer that difficult. Okay, so. Um, I think um, my audio should be fine if people are feeling uh, any kind of difficulty. It's probably uh, some bandwidth issue at your side. Uh, I've, I've ensured that my bandwidth is uh, more than sufficient for uh, this uh, video. Yeah, anyway. So, uh, if, if majority of you all feel any problem, then I will, I will take some. Uh, but I don't think it's required. Really. Yeah, yeah, everything is fine. We can go ahead. Yeah. So uh, today, data scientists are leading the charge in the application of statistics and probability to help businesses use the most important organizational assets, and that's their data. Okay. Today, uh, if you have been doing businesses if, uh, as chartered accountants, you all are sitting on a sitting on a stockpile of information. Okay, stockpile. You know, you have come, you have records and records and records. But if we are just going to be using it for doing um, uh, filing of taxes and compliances, and then you are not, we are not using that data to its fullest potential. Okay, and that's what we are trying to understand how we can do that. Okay. 
today it's just going to be a start we are not going to be uh, doing anything uh, you know uh, so complicated that people will not understand okay uh, business intelligence versus data science now this again is you know uh, the new term you know and this is how old older business intelligence used to be viewed and this is how new data science is being viewed please understand today the line between them is absolutely blurred i cannot tell you where business intelligence starts or ends and where data science starts okay today we don't do anything in the, those silos okay but when uh, because business intelligence as a word has been in existence for a far longer period than you know data sciences has been data science is a uh, what i would say is the remix version okay of uh, bi with the new uh, with the new fields okay so now um, uh, mr aditya i will answer your question let me come to that in a few minutes uh, bi is you know has perspective the perspective of bi is to look backwards it should look uh, you know at your past data and understand what's happening you know try to make sense of things data science looks forward but that, that doesn't mean you know it's easy to write in that way but it doesn't mean that it does not look backward it looks forward on the basis of what has happened in the past okay so the basic difference which we generally people say with data sciences today is that we are able to do something called as forecasting or predictive analytics okay so today we use uh, whether we talk, today's business intelligence has morphed into trying to just make sense of what has happened in the past but rather what will happen in the future is what we are trying to be able to, and that's where we we have coined this new word called data sciences okay we are doing the same things however because we have much more data available with a lot of confidence we can take decisions earlier those that level of confidence used to not be there because we didn't have the resources or the power you know in terms of processing to be able to process that much of amount of data to be sure that what we are saying is correct okay so um, everybody uh, just to give you an example earlier we used to look at uh, stock market trends and identify what and try to explain what happened you know why that crash happened or why that sudden hype in stock price happened so we tried to explain the bull market or the bear market and we and people used to give you know um, uh, projections but these projections were always you know mixed nowadays we are able to almost you know especially the 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 big uh, powerhouses of the stock market can actually predict to a large degree you know a broad trend of what will happen in the stock market okay broadly they'll be able to be you know very very accurate in that terms okay and sometimes too accurate for that matter and that's because the data the, the, the same techniques have now become much more refined and possible for us to be uh, much more uh, you know uh, actionable in intelligence you know so I, there is another word which we use nowadays is called as actionable intelligence what is the use of intelligence if we can't do anything about it so if we, if we if we are able to understand a trend but we can't do anything about it it's useless so that's what we say it's actionable intelligence okay so earlier what you used to do in business intelligence and we will explain i will explain this again when i do bi uh, later uh, on in one of the sessions is something called a slicing and dicing okay and today we interact with data okay and i will i will i will demonstrate that uh, these two things as we go along uh, uh, maybe not today's session but as we go along in the sessions ahead yes so uh, i'm trying to show this as a as two different things uh, per se because what we talk about data sciences and what was the earlier business intelligence okay today bi data science uh, the line is completely blurred you know you don't we don't have uh, separate applications called as business intelligence and data sciences the same applications do both the same tools do both okay so they look back they analyze the uh, past records and they allow you to uh, predict what's happening in the future it's not going to be just one or the other okay so the tools so today uh, the expertise you know is the so we used to have this business user now who's the business user so for example a manager or an accountant or ch a chartered accountant for example would be able to tell you what to do by looking at the past trend so he used to be the expert right a data scientist today can tell you the same things in a much more um, uh, convincing manner uh, with the help of support of data 
okay so that brings me to that uh, question which somebody asked that um, can we get into data science field uh, believe me you all are already into the data science field okay it's just that you you don't call it that okay so you all are into the field of understanding uh, numbers and trying to make sense of numbers and that's exactly what data science is it's trying to make sense of numbers trying to understand the trends trying to understand what's going to happen in the future okay and that's what you already are doing it's just that you don't call yourself as data scientists you'll call yourself as accountants okay or uh, some or some other fancy words okay uh, but basically you all are decision makers and you know you'll take decisions looking at data um, so it's like a doctor you know he, he a, a, i go to a doctor I, I tell him my symptoms the doctor tells me what's wrong with me okay exactly it's with you all right you'll look at the numbers and you can tell what's right and what's wrong with it and that's the job of a data scientist okay also okay so it's very easy for people like you all to get into data sciences in a far more better manner okay i know some of you all have already you know um, uh, done some courses in machine learning and data sciences and are doing more and you all should pursue that you know you you, you all are probably uh, the best people to do it because you all have a much better understand see for me though i understand data sciences i understand statistics for me to apply it to a financial uh, application is far more difficult because i need to understand finance i need to understand accounts which i don't okay so i'll have to spend a huge amount of time trying to understand that for you who understands the domain it's far more simpler to understand data science today because it's easier because of the tools available you don't have to read a textbook St starting from fi you know first year cup i take a book you don't have to read to understand what data science is okay but for me if i want to understand what accounts is i probably have to read a first fi bcom or maybe a 11 12 standard accounts ka book to really start understanding what accounts is okay unless i do that i won't understand it okay so that's the major difference that you don't really need to you can only learn what is required for your field and you can utilize that much more better way okay and that's how the things are so we always say that the questions what bi used to ask was what happened okay and data science is what if what if something happens so the output used to be a table in business intelligence and data analytics and data sciences we say an answer we try to find out what will happen and we will try to do this in a practical aspect today a little bit okay just to give you a window you know into the post the world of data sciences okay the tools are of course many uh sap cognos micro strategy sas were the tools which were already being used in business intelligence today we talk about new tools such as tableau and jaspersoft and power bi and stuff like that r you know revolution all of these not that they are coming with anything new uh, it's just that they have made themselves uh, very, very uh, a specialist of something. Okay. So as we go along, I will I will recommend you all certain things to do. Um, stay with me for the duration of this uh, program, and you will learn a lot. And once you realize what you really like, okay, and then you will be able to ask me very specific questions. Okay, of and then I can be able to give you much better answers because the world of data sciences, the world of data analytics, the world of, it's growing so fast. Okay, uh, people talk to me about robotic process, process automation and bots and you know, there's so many things. How many are you going to study? Okay, or how many are you going to do? So I generally feel that uh, people with experience, especially, uh, and most of you all are, should devote time to understanding the technology, not necessarily to as an implementer, but as a supervisor, as a so you what our job during this workshop is to help you all ask smart questions to the right people. Not necessarily to convert you into data scientists or to make you into uh, AI practitioners. No, AI practitioners will spend years and years and years of, you know, hard work in trying to become an AI expert. Okay, like how you all have done in your own professions, you all have spent years to, to reach where you are. Okay, so for me to reach at your position in accounting will take me years, it will make might take me five, 10 years just to reach, you know, half the place at where you are. However, for you, to use AI, you don't need to do that. You need to be able to know what is the potential 
and what are the right questions so so you know the good businessman and i i would i would be i'm sure that many of your uh, clients you know whom you respect would be the ones who ask you the right questions you know who ask you the right you know uh, you know, who tell you the right things because they know accounts they need not be accountants and that's what i want you to understand that you need not be an ai practitioner or a bi practitioner not somebody who actually codes or does the technology but you need to know what is possible in that and therefore ask the right questions to the right people so so in your company who's going to do that might be somebody else but you need to tell them what to do you need to ask them the right question i want this in this fashion then the person will be able because most, most of the times what the problem which happens is technology guys don't understand the business guys and the business guys don't understand the technology and therefore whatever the technology gives is very good in terms of technology but useless in terms of business okay and that's why we purposely said that we will be talking about business intelligence and not just artificial intelligence okay because what's the use of you know a lot of artificial intelligence if we can't do anything with it in terms of businesses all right Now, uh, let's so let, we get little technical, right? You know, it's all good and fine to talk about generic things, but uh, let's start with some basics. So the first thing which I talk about is, you know, um, something very close to my heart is random numbers. Okay, now many people might ask, what's so interesting about random numbers? you know uh, and for probably finance guys might really hate random numbers you know because you all might want numbers to make sense okay and random numbers by definition should not make any sense you know they are not supposed to make sense they are supposed to be random okay if they make some sense if they if there is a formula to get it then it's not really random right it, if you can draw a line or a curve to explain the sequence of numbers then it's not really random then why are we talking about random numbers today the field of uh, statistics uh, and uh, business intelligence and ai and all of that relies on lots of techniques some basic fundamentals and one of those fundamentals is random numbers and random numbers has lots of applications in lots of areas including uh, security you know so in security it is a completely different story uh, what random numbers are used for okay in terms of uh, business intelligence random numbers help us simulate events which supposedly are random okay so there are lots of lots and lots and lots of lots of applications over here okay so let me just start with a very simple application which everybody might have been using um if you remember uh, probably many of you all might have used this um there are lots of uh, banks or um, um, rather, uh, you know, I, I really don't know financial institutions who give their uh, customers a, a, a device like a keychain, which when you press it generates a number, a random number, and that is used as a password or a transaction key when you're doing an online transaction such as a, a DMAT transaction, you know, when you're buying, selling stuff like that. So you might you might know about these kind of keys which generate. So I remember um, my friend used to have a Kotak DMAT account and he had a small keychain kind of a thing, which was which had a small button and an LCD display. You press the button and you see some uh, six, uh, four or six digits, and every time you press it, you know after it, the number used to change, and uh, whenever he used to do a transaction, he would press that button and he would see that number and he would enter that number and done. That is the most important uh, verification for that. Now that number is generated seems to be random, okay? And it's a it's a what we call as a uh, random number generator. That device is called a random. It's actually a pseudo random number generator. Means it's not really really random, but it looks random, and it has to. It it's very difficult for anybody to predict what the next number is going to be, even if he knows the uh, last thousand numbers in the sequence or you know hundreds of numbers in the sequence. Okay, um, so OTPs and stuff like that, all of these rely on random numbers. You're absolutely right. Okay, so random number generator is a device 
okay that can generate one or many random numbers within a defined scope now random number generators can be hardware based or pseudo random number generator hardware based random number generators can involve the use of a dice or coin or flipping and stuff like that um, a very simple random number generator i will i will give you okay if i take a random four digit number to start with okay to start with i just take a random four digit number i multiply it to itself it means i make a square of that number and then i it will produce a four digit number multiplied by four digit number itself will give me a seven to an eight digit number what i can do is i can take the middle four digits the middle four digits will be random i cannot predict what the four digits in the middle are going to be so you, you remove the two digits from the start two digits from the end middle four numbers you take that becomes a random number now you multiply it to itself again again the middle four digits will be random again you do the same process again and again and again so this is a formula of generating a very simple four digit random number by starting from a four digit number the only thing you need to remember is don't start from zero if you start from zero 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 then you will, all your numbers are going to be zero but if you start from any good four digit number like you know um, anything more than thousand you will end up with for you know random numbers okay which will truly look random okay and nobody will be able to predict okay so that's a very simple formula to generate a random number but there are huge complicated formulas which are available and used in the industry to generate random numbers okay uh, then next topic i will talk about is something called descriptive statistics i will just give you the basics then i will take you to excel okay so uh, in the next 10 to 12 minutes i will just give you the basics and then we will go to um for the actual practical implementation of certain things okay so this is an uh, example of which I, I would like you all to remember this example uh, i will i will use it even in the future okay so this is an example of uh, 10 loan applicants okay so you can see the data of 10 loan applicants there are 10, 10 random applicants um some of them are married, some of them are single, some of them are other, you know, they might have some other situation. So there are three marital status possible, single, married or other. So they form just a barai, vaisa other answer. Then whether they are having any mortgage. So, so that is yes or no, why and likha why. Their income, this is their annual income in dollars because this is an American example. That's okay. So $38,000 a year. Or so these are various uh, incomes of these individuals. We've ranked these incomes. So we know that 48,000, okay, the eighth applicant, the applicant number eight, okay, is the highest, okay. So, so this eighth applicant has the rank number one. So he's ranked number one because his uh, income is 48,000. Okay, the second highest is 38,000. So we've ranked them in order. Also the year, okay, of their mortgage and the risk, so is it a good loan or a bad loan? Okay. So now this is what we want to predict. The risk is what we will call it as a prediction variable. If you really want to do some data analytics or some business analytics and take decisions, how will this help? Can I use these factors, the so marital status, mortgage, their income, the year you know in which uh, they have taken the mortgage? Can I take those as parameters and identify whether the loan is going to be risky? You know, so is whether that loan is going to be a bad loan? What, what are the probability that the loan will be bad? Okay, now, this is things which are used by machine learning algorithms. Okay, so they would take instead of 10 records, they would take 10 million records and learn. Instead of taking just four or five parameters, they would take 400 parameters and learn now where would these 400 parameters come from it would come from the forms which are filled by these employees it would come from their civil records it will come from their Aadhaar card record so i would know their pin codes i would know the number of um, dependents i would know their age i would know hundreds of things about them you know maybe their religion their ethnicity their, all of that could be put into the model to identify whether that person is a good bet you know to uh, give a loan or would not be okay so this kind of actionable uh, things are important when we come to uh, business now in terms of uh, 
statistics, there are some simple things which we need to know that there is something called as an element and there is something called as variable. So each record, each row, okay, is an element. So there are 10 elements over here in this table. Okay, one element, each element contains variables. So the columns are the variables. So which are the variables every element has in this case, okay, six variables, marital status, mortgage, income, income rank, year and risk. Okay, now some of these variables are qualitative variables, some of these are, are quantitative variables. Qual, uh, qualitative variables like marital status. So you are single, married or other. So it's not numeric value, but your income, okay, is a numeric value. So your numeric values are what we call as quantitative, you know, something which you can quantify. Whereas the qualitative variables are the variables which you cannot quantify. They are, you know, the color of your skin, the color of your hair, okay, your uh, are things which are not quantifiable. I cannot put a number to that. I can convert it to a code. I can always say that, you know, uh, single is zero and married is one and other is two. I can do that, but that doesn't make it quantitative. It just makes it into a number representing a qualitative variable. So the variable will remain qualitative, even if I show it using a number, just by doing some kind of coding. Okay. So codifying does not make it into a numeric value. So qualitative and quantitative I've already explained and there is something called as discrete variables and so qualitative variables, uh, sorry, uh, are also called as categorical. So these are categories, you know, so single married others are categories. So we call them as category categorical variables. Okay, quantitative variables, we also call them as numerical variables. Okay, that's very obvious why they are called numerical. Variables. Now discrete variables is a variable that can take finite or quantum countable numbers. Okay, so for example, rank, okay, very finite. But then there are continuous variables which can take any number in between, you know, so uh, salaries, for example, incomes can is an example of a continuous variable. You can it need not be a round number, right? It can be any odd number. And there are infinite number of numbers possible when you want to calculate salaries because of decimal values in picture. So it's a continuous variable. Okay. Whereas our income rank is a discrete variable because income rank is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There cannot be 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8. .1 Therefore, income rank is converting a continuous variable like income into a discrete variable called as income rank. Okay, so I hope uh, that part is clear. So these are some basic, very basic uh, things which uh, need to be known. Okay, another uh, very basic uh, measure of uh, uh, you know descriptive uh, statistics. So descriptive statistics is basically the st part of statistics which explains the numbers. You know, so it describes the numbers. Okay, so I'm, I'm going at a very basic, very hard because uh, we not some sometimes we forget what we, what we had studied in the past. So all of you all might have definitely studied all of this, but let, let, let me just go into the very small basics and then I will take you to something little more, uh, you know, uh, slightly more complicated. So you have things like mean, median and mode. Okay, so what is the mean? Mean is basically the arithmetic average. Arithmetic average means you add all the numbers up and divide it by the total num the, the number of numbers and you will get it. So if you have 10 values, okay, uh, so 10 people, if you have heights of 10 people and you want to find the average height of those 10 people, you basically add all those 10 people's heights and divide it by 10. You get the average height of that you know, room of people. Okay, so if you have 10 people in the room, that's a very easy way of calculating an arithmetic average. However, there is another way of calculating the central tendencies. So these are central tendencies. So it's mean, median, and mode. So another way of calculating the average height of, or sorry, the mean, uh, the central height of the entire room of 10 people is that I, you know, uh, check each of their heights, write them on down on a piece of paper, okay, in an ascending order or a descending order, or I can actually make them stand in an ascending order or a descending order if they're actually human beings. And then I can take the person in the center Okay, and that height is the median height. Okay, which is generally a good idea if you have a very tall person or a very short person in the room, because that very short person or a very tall person will actually deviate the mean. Okay, your mean will be deviated because of that abnormality. Okay, so that's what we call as an anomaly in statistics. So, or what we call as outliers. Okay, they are you know these uh, rare individuals who affect the entire mean so you know in a class of so when we are trying to calculate percentages of average percentage of something you know so when we are, if, if there is an outlier it actually disrupts our mean 
median is does not get disrupted by outliers because we put everything in a sequential order like a uh, ascending or a descending sequence and then the central value the middle value is what we consider as our central tendency okay so median is a much better value in certain cases mode is another way of finding central tendency that is what if we calculate if it and this is very poss uh, possible when you have discrete values not when it is continuous variable so if you have a discrete variable mode is a very good central tendency because what you can do in discrete variables is you can count the most uh, frequently occurring value so if, if there is a particular value which occurs the most then that value can be considered as the mode okay so if suppose there are 10 people and if uh, four of them have the height of 5.4 5 feet 4 inches four of them are 5 feet 4 inches and everybody else is you know different heights we will say 5.4 is the median or rather the mode of this group okay so these are mean median and mode and then there is something called as measures of variability now what is variability the variability we calculate in terms of two things first uh, so there are uh, four factors which we will study uh, one is range the other is variance range is the maximum and the minimum value when you subtract them when you subtract the minimum value from the maximum value you get the range of anything because okay, so any variable so suppose if you have 10 people in a room and the minimum height is uh, 5 feet 2 inches and the maximum height is 6 feet 2 inches then the difference between them is 1 feet that is 12 inches so 12 inches is your range so your uh, your entire all the 10 people are in the range so they are their maximum minimum heights are in the range of 12 inches that's called the range the variance is a little different so what we do in variance is we subtract each value from the arithmetic mean and then square it up and add it up so we sum of the square of the differences okay so it's, it's the average of the squared differences we call it so we suppose there are 10 people and the average height is 5.6 then we will subtract each individual from 5.6 and square up their height square up that value take a summation and divide it by n this is what we call as variance it is given by a uh, denoted by a uh, symbol in uh, uh, statistics as sigma so that that uh, symbol which you see over there is what we call as a sigma and we put a square on it so sigma square is what we call as variance and if we uh, do not uh, want that square what we can do is we can put a we can easily put a square root on the right hand side so the whole thing will be square rooted on the right hand side by removing the square so that then the sigma will become the standard deviation so sigma is the sigma in itself is standard deviation and if you square the standard deviation you get your variance so these are some statistical concepts which are very important it tells us how much your data varies from the mean so what is the importance of that or the standard deviation is how much is your data closer to the mean or how how much is your data far away from the mean so is it very uh, you know strongly away from the mean or very close to the mean is very important okay so for example i you can take an example of a basket of mangoes okay or, or you know peti hota na aam ki peti hoti hai agar if all the mangoes are of different sizes if all the mangoes are of different sizes we say there is a high variance but if all the mangoes okay are of very similar size then we say that the variance is less you might have two baskets okay of let's say 12 mangoes uh, two boxes of 12 12 mangoes each and when you take the average size you might find both the average sizes are same but one basket the variation is too much the other basket the variation is very less okay between the sizes of the mangoes that means the one which has more variance okay will actually if you calculate it in this formula you will find that the sigma square value is high and if you calculate the value for the box of mangoes where the size is not changing too much you will find that the sigma square value is low so it basically tells you the actual variance of those elements which form that average okay this is important because if you if you are studying and when many many of the times what we do is we we, we we plot graphs like this you know standard deviation plot and we need to know how much is your standard deviation deviating actually means if your sigma value is 5 okay okay 
So this is what we in this diagram. What we have done is there are three different data distributions for hundred variables. Now so we are taking hundred hundred variables, hundred uh, values, and we are trying to find out the standard deviation. One for so one of the uh, set data sets has the standard deviation of five. Another has ten. Another has twenty. What does it mean? The smaller the standard deviation, narrower the peak. That means the data points are closer. मतलब उनके बीच में variance सबसे कम होगा. they will all be of the similar size or similar nature if you look at the red plot that means the standard deviation is 20 okay variance to 20 square ho jayega so sigma square so variance will be square so that will be you know 400 so variance 400 means it is varying a lot so the blue curve indicates the elements are close together to the mean mean being 100 over here in sab ka mean 100 hai तीनों वैल्यूज का तीनों सेट्स का रेड का पर्पल का ब्लू का तीनों का वेरिएंस मीन इज 100 बट द वेरिएंस इज डिफरेंट सो वी कैन हैव द सेम मीन फॉर अ ग्रुप ऑफ नंबर्स बट दे कैन मीन कंप्लीटली डिफरेंट इफ यू कैलकुलेट इफ यू आल्सो सी द स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन और वेरिएंस ऑफ दोस वेरिएबल्स ओके सो नाउ लेट मी जस्ट गो टू समथिंग अभी थ्योरी बहुत हो गया आई कैन अंडरस्टैंड आप लोगों को बोर हो गए हो ओके सो लेट मी let me go to yeah standard deviation ka square standard deviation is sigma so standard deviation ka square okay. so business terms mein sir uh, again the same value hota hai na uh, mean median mode agar aap kisi bhi uh, stock ka average price nikalte hain okay somebody is asking me in your business terms right एक स्टॉक मार्केट अगर आपको सी आई हैव वेरी लिमिटेड एग्जांपल्स इन अकाउंटिंग प्लीज बेर विथ स्टॉक प्राइस कैसे निकालते हैं आप मंथली एवरेज अगर आपने निकाला तो व्हाट व्हाट कैन यू डू आप 30 डेज व्हाट एवर नंबर ऑफ वर्किंग डेज जिस मन, एक महीने में है सपोज जून के महीने का मंथ का एवरेज निकालना है आप वर्किंग डेज का क्लोजिंग प्राइस उस स्टॉक का ले लोगे ओके क्लोजिंग प्राइस का एवरेज निकालोगे एंड यू विल से दैट इज द एवरेज क्लोजिंग प्राइस ऑफ दैट स्टॉक फॉर द मंथ ऑफ जून बट डज दैट गिव यू एनी इंडिकेटर कि वो स्टॉक इतना वॉलेटाइल है अगर उसका मीन मीडियन और मोड तीनों अगर वेरी वेरी क्लोज टू इच अदर है ना यू कैन से दैट दैट स्टॉक इज अ वेरी स्टेबल स्टॉक वो स्टॉक बहुत ज्यादा अदर थिंग विच यू नीड टू नो आफ्टर दैट इज द रेंज इफ दैट रेंज एंड उसका मीन मीडियम मोड अगर रेंज कम है और मीन मीडियम मोड बहुत ही क्लोज टूगेदर है दैट मीन्स दैट इज वॉट यू कैन से इज अ सेफ स्टॉक जो आप जो और फिर जो आप रिस्की स्टॉक्स कहते हो जिसमें पैसा भी शायद ज्यादा बनता होगा मुझे मालूम नहीं आई डोंट प्ले लॉट ऑफ आई डोंट हैव रियली एनी काइंड ऑफ स्टॉक पोर्टफोलियो और एनी थिंग बट the reason i understand it is that i know what a volatile stock is a volatile stock means jiska range bahut bada hai okay aur mean median mode ek dusre se hatke hai okay to agar aapka mean median mode saath mein nahi aa raha hai aur agar aapka range kafi bada hai matlab ye stock volatile hai okay i hope that is a good explanation for मीन मीडियन एंड मोड फॉर्मूला आपको पता है मीन मीडियन मोड का अगर आप बीस आपके पूरे महीने का सप्ताह ऐड करके डिवाइड करेंगे बाई थर्टी यू विल गेट द मीन मीडियन विल बी यू हैव टू पुट ऑल ऑफ दम ऑल द ऑल द क्लोज दी प्राइस इन अ सीक्वेंस ऑफ यू नो स्टार्ट टू एंड एंड देन द सीक्वेंस ऑफ असेंडिंग एंड डिसेंडिंग ऑर्डर एंड द मिडल वैल्यू विल बी योर मीडियन एंड मोड विल बी द सबसे ज्यादा बार वो किस वैल्यू पे स्टॉक क्लोज हुआ था जिस जिस अमाउंट पे वो क्लोज हुआ था अगर वो आप लेंगे तो यू यू माइट हैव टू राउंड इट ऑफ टू द नियरेस्ट राउंड नंबर बिकॉज अदरवाइज द एक्चुअल वैल्यूज माइट बी वेरी यू नो डिफरेंट बिकॉज डेसिमल में कभी कभी वैल्यूज होती है यू माइट हैव टू राउंड इट ऑफ टू द नियरेस्ट टेन रुपी और वट एवर एंड देन यू विल बी एबल टू कैलकुलेट द मीडियम रादर द मोड विच इज द मोस्ट लाइकली वैल्यू विच इज रिपीटिंग अगेन एंड अगेन बट अगर मेन मीडियम मोड अलग अलग आ रहे हैं मतलब वो स्टॉक काफी वेरी हो रहा है Similarly, standard deviation and variance will also help you in identifying that that stock is how much it is varying. All right. So, uh, see the 
uh, high, uh, it's not the highest curve it has the highest peak okay so i think mr nikunj has asked me the question ke wo blue wala curve peak kyu zyada kar raha hai okay see the number of elements are all there na in a very small area to wo peak karega see it's it's like think of it as 1 uh, kilo gehu hai aapke paas agar aapke paas 1 kilo gehu hai uska dher hai agar aap usko narrow karoge to peak ho jayega na wo number of grains in that 1 uh, kilo of, uh, wheat is going to be the same if i make it a smaller peak okay if i spread it in a bigger uh, area the peak will reduce but if i put the same 1 kilo of grains if i put it into a very small narrow area the peak will become higher it's basic matlab us hisab se because the number of elements in the three curves are same number of num elements are same jitne hi elements hai to utne sare elements same hi hai to agar wo uska variance kam hoga to uska peak pehle aa jayega okay? i i hope you understand the wheat example the number of grains are all the same so the number of elements are all the same if you if you if you bring them closer together it will start peaking okay matlab usko usko narrow tower bante jayega aur agar usko aap vary karoge spread karoge to this is flattening the curve na hum log abhi covid mein humko ulta chahiye covid ke time pe we don't want everybody to fall sick together we want to flatten the curve we want humko malum hai ke itne lakh log bimar padne wale hain but humko chahiye ke that spreads over Six months period, so that we can treat them easily. If they all fall sick in the same one month or two months, then the uh, hospitals will not be able to take care of them. So, in COVID situation, we are doing reverse. Okay, we don't want uh, everybody to fall sick together. So, वहाँ पे उल्टा प्रोसेस चाहिए. We want uh, high variance in terms of timing. Right. ठीक है, I just want to ask you if you can see my Excel sheet when I open it, okay? Can you all see my Excel sheet? Yeah, yeah, we can see your Excel sheet. Yes. Okay. Yes, the peak denotes the standard deviation. Okay, if it's narrow, that means the standard deviation is okay. Hi, the it does not vary too much. now here i am doing a what if analysis humne kaha tha na ki data science mein aur uh, business in, uh, intelligence pehle hota tha usme abhi kya aayega so we try to answer what if questions very simple so we will start off with a simple what if question okay in excel and then we will go to some of the statistical concepts so before i start with some technical statistical concepts i said i'll start with some very simple business problems okay Some of you cannot see the Excel sheet. Am I? Dikh raha hai na? Yeah, 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 we can. Yeah, yeah, it's proper. Yeah, I think okay. maybe yeah. with their the participants. Ah, chalega. So, I think for a time that time, I'll be busy with the to reflect on. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, the problem I have tried to explain over here. Okay. So, assume you own a bookstore and have hundred books in storage. Okay. Uh, right now yahan pe total number of books maine 200 likha let let me put it 100 because mera problem set hai 100 okay so there are 100 books in your storage you sell certain amount of books for high price which is 50 dollars okay jisme aapka profit hai and certain percentage of books at a lower price jahan pe aapka 20 dollars aapka profit hai okay ab wo rupees mein bhi kar sakte hain dollar because wo excel mera dollars mein Okay, and then if you sell sixty percent for highest price and forty percent for the lowest price, your total profit which you will earn sixty percent means sixty books out of hundred books, sixty books you sold at a high profit, forty books you sold at a low profit. So what is your total profit? So we have done a very simple mathematical formula. Okay, other sixty percent. अगर हमने लिखा है कि सोल्ड एट हाइयर प्रॉफिट तो हमने यहाँ पे कैलकुलेट किया हुआ है दैट दिस इज 60 परसेंट ऑफ 100 एंड दिस इज 1 माइनस सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ 100 सो दैट इज 40 
एंड देन हमारा यूनिट प्रॉफिट हमारा प्रॉब्लम ने बताया कि हाईएस्ट प्राइस पे जब बिकेगा तो इट इज फिफ्टी डॉलर एंड लोएस्ट प्राइस पे बिकेगा इट विल बी ट्वेंटी डॉलर सो ऑटोमेटिकली द टोटल प्रॉफिट इज नथिंग बट सिक्सटी इंटू फिफ्टी प्लस फोर्टी इंटू ट्वेंटी दैट इज वट आई रिटर्न ओवर इयर सो सी सेवन इंटू डी सेवन प्लस सी एट इंटू डी एट आई एम अज्यूमिंग एवरीबडी अंडरस्टैंड अभी भी वॉइस का प्रॉब्लम है क्या नो नो वी आर एबल टू योर यू क्लियरली या ओके ठीक है सो दिस टेल्स मी फॉर सिक्सटी परसेंट नो वॉट इफ इज द क्वेश्चन वॉट इफ वी सेल सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द बुक्स ओके एट हायर प्राइस वॉट इफ आई सेल 50% percent of the books at higher price. What if I sell 30% percent of the books at? So these are different questions which I might ask. कि 70% percent बेचा तो क्या होगा? 80% percent if high price पे बेचा, 90% percent, 100% percent. What will be the different scenarios? So these are what we call as what if scenarios. So in Excel there is a very simple way to do this. Okay, if you go to data. Okay, so depending on the version of Excel which you are using, the uh, view which you will get might be different. okay so i can go to data yahan pe aapko what if dikhega can you see the what if analysis box in the forecast yahan pe forecast mein you have what if analysis so now i click on this what if analysis and i click on something called as scenario manager i want to check the different scenarios ओके सो आई वांट टू चेक 70 परसेंट पे क्या होगा 80 परसेंट पे क्या होगा 90 परसेंट पे क्या होगा 100 परसेंट पे क्या होगा तो आई क्रिएटेड दिस सिनेरियोस जस्ट आई विल शो यू हाउ टू क्रिएट द सिनेरियो आल्सो डोंट वरी सो आई विल जस्ट क्लिक ऑन दिस सिनेरियो मैनेजर करेंटली आई हैव ऑलरेडी क्रिएटेड सर्टेन सिनेरियोस लाइक 60 परसेंट सेवेंटी परसेंट आईटी परसेंट नाइनटी परसेंट हंड्रेड आई विल शो यू हाउ टू क्रिएट अ सिनेरियो फ्रॉम स्क्रैच सपोज ये सब नहीं होता तो क्या करते हैं ये पहले एम होगा जब अगर आप खुद ये टेबल बनाएंगे तो ये आपके लिए एम होगा सो वट विल है I will create it and add a scenario. I will click on add. I will share this Excel sheet with you, so don't worry about anything. Okay. I will give you the scenario name. So let's say fifty percent highest. Agar ham if we sell fifty percent of the books at the highest margin. Okay. If I sell fifty percent of at the highest margin, okay, the value sell value which will change. okay is this value c4 okay so i want this 50% to become 60% to become 50% so that is my c4 okay and i will say so right now i don't want to i want to prevent changes right now and i click on okay so this is my new scenario so it says what should be the value in this new scenario so i mean 50% highest is any name you can give now this is where you have to say so i want to say that the value should be 0.5 0.5 means 50% so c4 ki value will be 0.5 so it is right now in the formatted version so it is actually this numeric value for percentage is decimal value so you have to write 0.5 for 50% so if i click on okay okay so i have this 50% Okay, so now sixty percent, seventy percent, eighty percent, ninety percent, hundred percent, and fifty percent. Go order as I mean. Now, once I do this, I can click on the button called summary. <coughs> If I click on summary, it will create okay a scenario summary for me, and I can select where to show this. Okay, so the scenario summary, the result is on this this cell. रिजल्ट सेल कौन सा है हमारा तो द रिजल्ट सेल इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि ये 60% हमको चेंज करना है एंड वी वांट टू कैलकुलेट डिफरेंट वैल्यूज फॉर दिस टोटल प्रॉफिट तो यहां पे ये जो फार्मूला है c7 into d7 plus c8 into d8 will be automatically calculated for different values of this percentage so 0.6 0.7 0.8 0.9 0.5 ke liye this total profit will be calculated so we want to calculate the resultant cell is d10 and i click on okay the moment i click on okay this scenario table has been created scenario summary where i can see that the current value is 60% the profit is 33800 dollars if it is 70% my profit will be 4100 dollars if it is 80% it is 4400 90% it is 4700 so if i want to sell all my books 
at the highest price, then I will be able to make a profit of 5,000. But the risk is if I try to sell it all at the highest price, I might not be able to sell 100% of my books. So can I sell some of my books at a lower price? What will be the loss which I will get? Well, notional loss. So my notional loss, I can say if I sell 60% of the books only at the highest price and 40% of the books may discount my bage do. Somebody wants to buy in bulk. And if I sell it, I will be still be able to make a decent profit of $3,800. And then I can decide based on this scenario, what am I comfortable with? How many percentage of these books can I sell it at a discount? And how many percentage of the books I will want to sell at full value? But it is the highest profit. And this will allow me to create a good what if analysis. Okay. You can also create a pivot chart out of it. That is uh, very simple. If you would just want to do the same thing again, go to what if analysis, go to scenario manager. If I click on summary, but this time I click on scenario pivot report, pivot table report, then automatically instead of that table in a horizontal format, you get in a vertical format. Okay, what will be the profit? So we know that at 100%, it will be $5,000. At 50%, it will only be $3,500. So this is our range. Hai. That if I sell 50% of the books at highest price, I will get $3,500. If I sell 100% of my books at uh, highest price, I will get $5,000. And then everything else will be in between. All right. So is what if scenario clear to everybody? Someone may ask you. All right. So now we will go to the next, uh, which is called as data. So I will, I will say don't save so that you can do follow the sheet and do the same process again. So there is a data table. Okay. Now data table is the same thing. Which problem hai. problem change I can create this a little faster okay in the format which i want you scenario manager apna khud ka format banata don't like that format i want my own format so yaha pe maine apna khud ka ek format banaya hai okay pehla one there is there is one variable data table and two variable data table so pehle main simple one variable sikhata hu fir main so again now what i've done is i have created my scenarios on my hand so i have written it by hand 60% 70% 80% 90% 100% okay if you want 50% then i will also add one more scenario insert and i will create a 50% scenario okay this is my scenario yahan pe i will give a header which will be equal to i am writing equal to this total profit hamara okay d10 in this case it is the cell cell is d10 value so i will take this so i need to keep this ready and then i can do something called as data tables again you go to data what if analysis but now you have something called as a data table so now i want to create a data as so i have the data and i want to create a table with one variable so what i do is i click on data table and i say my row input cell sorry my uh Column input cell is this. making some some i'm just forgetting that the small sometimes you know i just end up forgetting the options I 
just give me one second, one second. I'm just You know, you just end up forgetting the uh, yeah. So now it works. I'll just repeat uh, once again. So we'll just put this uh, value. So you have 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. You click on this value equal to 3800, which is your formula. So your formula, either you know, you're taking that value this as a header that you know that this is the formula which you want to use. Now you select the whole thing. And you go to your what if analysis, create your data table, and the row input which you want to give is 60%. Okay. Column input you have to give is 60%. So that 60% will and C4 if I select, I will automatically get the same values over here, which I was getting using scenario manager. Scenario manager is easily come to here. We are just selecting the data table and now you have it in your own format. So now 50% pay, it will be 3500 and then at 100% it will be 5000. Okay, so this is a way of doing this data table uh, values. A single variable. Now, what if I wanted to have two variables which I want to change? What if I want to change even the price? What if I want to? What if the price also changes? Like you know, this unit profit for the highest price also changes. Then I can do what we call as a two variable data table. Okay. Now, two variable data table. Me, kya hoga? We still again have the same scenario: 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Again, over 60. I'm using the formula. The total profit here would be 10. Pe likha hua. So this is my. This is equal to this total profit okay now you have 50 dollars this is uh, i've just written 50 dollars 60 dollars 70 dollars i'm assuming what should be my highest price okay so whether my highest price should be 50 dollars whether it should be 60 dollars whether it should be 70 dollars how much profit do i want what will happen if i change the margin okay so this is a what if scenario again but now we are wanting to change two things what happens when i change the highest percentage of uh, books sold at that price and i also want to change the amount of profit for that highest percentage the two variables may humko isko change check karna hai. so then what i can do is i can just select the whole thing okay and i want to populate this what i will do is i'll go to what if and i will say data table okay so the row input The column input at 60%. Okay, I'll again do the same thing. We select the whole thing. We go to what if analysis, data table. The row input value, I want to take it as this yellow circle, yellow ball. And the column input will come from this. So this, these are my columns and these are my rows, right? So percentage is my row hai or columns may mirror margin hai, profit margin. So if I click on OK. Sorry, again, reverse. Sometimes, you know, you, you end up knowing it and you just end up doing it in the complete reverse order. So I just have to swap the references and it will work. Okay. So when I swap it, it works properly. So now you know that if I sell 60% of the books at the highest price of $50, I will make 3800 as my profit. But if I sell 100% of my books at 
then the maximum profit I can make is five thousand dollars. But if I sell hundred percent of my books at seventy dollars per profit margin, I will make seven thousand dollars. So that formula is okay. So currently, it only works with two variables. So this what if analysis currently works with only maximum two variables because it has a row and a column option only. Okay, anything further, we will have to write our own formula. So here, the advantage is that you have to write your own formula. It is working on its own. So it has one or maximum two because two-dimensional Excel may two dimensions is other karna possible name. Okay, so the variable jo hum log lenge, ye, yaha, in do variable pe depend karta hai. it does not understand any limit. Okay, so right now this is percentage and this is dollar. Yeah, Hamara Hamara interpretation. What if we'll only calculate for numbers, whatever is the scenario? Okay. So I don't think there is any upper limit to the numbers or the lower limit to any numbers. It can go for any, it can go for negative, positive, anything. Okay. Because it's just a what if analysis. Because it's a financial situation, the upper limit of because it's a percentage, obviously it, it cannot go above hundred percent. But if you hundred percent ke upper likhoge, to koi problem nahi hai. Okay, so suppose you say hundred and ten percent, wo kam karega. You can change it right now also. So if you go to zero percent, okay. So if you sell zero percent of your book at highest price, means all your books will be sold at lower price. So at lowest price means twenty dollars of profit. So it will make. Two thousand dollars profit, even when it is zero percent. Can I select A thirteen and B twelve? A thirteen and B twelve. I don't understand. Why would I want to select that? The formula over here works with these two values. Please understand. This 3800 this 3800 uses the formula C7, D7, C8, D8. So it has to be values from which are in. See the, the output hamara aara hai. It is dependent on four variables. So the what if analysis will work on only these four variables. So when I select this, you know, you will select so C7, D7, C8, D8. So is in ki upar se koi values. Now, is ki value because it is li linked with this C4, it is okay. If it is not linked to it, then it would be a problem. So you are dependent on a chahi. 100% sales give 7,000 because 100% of the books will be sold at 70%. Sorry, 100% of the books will be sold at $70 profit. Agar ye, ye jo value hai, agar $70 kar dume. And I write 100% over here. So 100% of the books at $70 will give me $7,000, which is what's saying. So I can manually change karne bethu, usse achha, mujhe ye data table directly. Wo sab bata I can always trial and error. Se kar bhi sakta I can keep working with it. Okay. We'll go to the next. Okay. There are lots of other things to do. We'll move, move to the next. I will again not save it. So you can do it on your own. Goal seek is ulta when we say so ye yeah, target pata karna tha. What if we know the target? Okay, what if we know what we want to achieve? We don't know the input. So one of the most common uh, uh, examples jo hum log academics mein hai, what if I know the final grade jo mujhe my, I know my final percentage. Mujhe, mujhe, mujhe distinction lana hai. Suppose I know so what is the marks which I need to score if I know my exam paper one paper two paper three, like, three unit test ho chuke hai. I know that I've scored 50 80 60 and currently my average other my average calculate kar ye formula hai average B2 to B5 B2 to B5 ka average Nikala hai mene. B2 to B5 is this right now it's 63.33 because there are three values fourth value hai nahin. Mere paas ek attempt baki hai. and I want to get 70% Okay, suppose 70 percent is distinction. Suppose I want to get distinction. So what should be my score in my fourth examination, fourth examination, my final examination, so that I get 70 percent? Okay. 
okay so now what can i do with this so what i will do is i will go again to the same uh, data forecast what if analysis udar goal seek so when i click on goal seek okay i want to set the value of this variable b5 okay so not, not this variable sorry i want to set the value of this variable b7 b7 matlab the final grade i want that value to become what i want to make it 70% mujhe ab chahiye ki wo 70% ho jaye by changing the value of the cell b5 so what i want to do i want to set the cell b7 okay i want this 63.33 to become to to which value i wanted to become 70 i wanted to become 70 not for it to become 70 i want to change the value of the cell b5 which is currently empty b5 is empty so i can change the value of that b5 very easily and i want this to become 70 now what it will do is the moment i click on okay it will start calculating and because it is going through a video stream you might not see the calculation moving the way i see it but ab wo kya kar raha hai na it is trying various numbers okay and finally it found out that target value 70 achieve karne ke liye exam 4 mein i have to score 90 marks if i score 90 in my final exam i will be able to get a final grade of 70 okay so i'll repeat it once again very quickly so if i don't score 90 i have currently my average is 63.33 what do i do i would do a what if analysis i want to goal my goal is to set this 63.33 should become 70 70% suppose i want my goal to be that i want to score 75% ab wo mushkil bhi ho sakta hai and what i want to score 75% now 75% score karna hai by changing the value of ek hi exam mere hath mein baki hai exam 1 2 3 to ho chuka hai फाइनल एग्जाम बाकी है फाइनल एग्जाम में मुझे कितना स्कोर करना पड़ेगा तो ओके किया इट विल कैलकुलेट एंड देन इट रिजल्ट्स आफ्टर सम टाइम दैट आई हैव टू स्कोर 110 मार्क्स नाउ दिस माइट बी एन इंपॉसिबल टास्क इफ माय पेपर इज ऑफ 100 मार्क्स सो आई नो दैट आई कैन नॉट स्कोर 75 बट टू स्कोर 70 आई नीड 90 ओके सो द गोल सीक करंटली वर्क्स फॉर ओनली वन वैल्यू Currently, it will only work for one value because it has to try out all the possible combinations. So, another practical implementation of this uh, application of this uh, formula. No, it won't work because if we divide by four, we will get a problem. It will be average formula. It will start because if we divide by four, we will get wrong formulas used. Don't do that. You need to use the average formula only. बिकॉज एवरेज में क्या हो रहा है वो थ्री को डिवाइड बाई थ्री करता है जब फोर वैल्यूज आ जाएगी तो ऑटोमेटिकली डिवाइड बाई फोर करता है वो एवरेज फॉर्मूला में और डिवाइड बाई फोर में फर्क है ओके सो डोंट राइट स्लैश डिवाइड बाई फोर यू हैव टू यूज द एवरेज फॉर्मूला बिकॉज एवरेज फॉर्मूला में क्या होता है इफ द वैल्यूज एम टी देन ऑटोमेटिकली द डिनोमिनेटर चेंजेस ओके इफ द वैल्यू कम्स गेट्स फील्ड ऑटोमेटिकली द डिनोमिनेटर चेंजेस यू डोंट हैव टू डू एनीथिंग इफ यू हार्ड कोड द फॉर्मूला इट्स अ प्रॉब्लम Because you will not get 63.33. It can be any formula. Now this is a PMT formula. PMT formula is used to calculate the EMI. Okay, uh, loans का EMI calculate आप लोगों ने use किया होगा Excel में PMT function. तो PMT function क्या करता है? PMT function takes basically your uh, rate of interest, comma your duration, comma your principal. and calculates the emi so the yahan pe annual rate of interest is 9.5% so what i will have to do for pmt function is pmt function i will have to say b1 by 12 because monthly karna hai calculate so what is my monthly rate of interest mujhe chahiye so 9.5 divided by 12 will be my monthly rate of interest the number of years duration of the loan i suppose i'm saying i want it for 15 loan 15 uh years ke liye chahiye okay so if suppose my loan is for 15 years it's a home loan at 9.5% 15 years 15 years into 12 months so i will pay 60 emi uh, sorry um i will pay what uh, 180 emis okay something like that 
and i want a loan of 30 lakhs so 3 million 3 million rupees is 30 lakhs so this is what it tells me at 9.5% interest 9.5% interest my emi will come out to be 31000 rupees barabar hai you all would know much better than me ke formula correct hai ke nahi hai now what if problem ulta hai problem ye hai ke i know that i can only pay 25000 rupees per month matlab mera itna hi capacity hai so what is the loan which i can take for how much amount of loan is maximum is possible if i can pay only 25000 rupees as my monthly payment as my emi so ye again becomes a goal seek problem so what i can do is i can again go to what if analysis click on goal seek and what i want to say is i want to set the value of this b5 b5 being my monthly payment that my monthly payment has to be minus 25000 rupees See when it goes, I have to write minus. So uh, red bracket me aaraya matlab it is negative value. So minus thirty one thousand rupees. So minus thirty one thousand three hundred and twenty six is my outgo. So my outgo value should be minus twenty five thousand. That is what I am comfortable with. By changing the sell of the loan amount, interest rate mere hath me nahi hai. Pandra saal I can change that also if I want to change. I want to check ki bhai itna amount ke liye mujhe kitna saal lagega. That also is possible. That how many how many years will i require to take the loan for if i want to have 25000 so there are two ways of doing this either you uh, change the value of the loan amount or you change the value of the number of years because i want to make sure that my monthly emi is 25000 rupees only okay so for th this i want to set the value of b5 as 25000 and I want to change the value of my B3. B3 being the loan amount. You can also do it with years. The moment I click on OK, okay, it has calculated that the maximum loan I can get is 23 lakhs 94,120 rupees and 77 paise. अगर एकदम accurate जाना है तो, so if I want to have a 25,000 rupees EMI, okay, if I want to have a 25,000 rupees EMI. This is what I want. Audio okay? Yeah, yeah, audio is okay. Yeah, all right. Clear? Yeah? So in this way, for any value. So now, if I want to change it for the number, the other option is that I can do it for. Suppose I go back and I want to do it for the number of years. Suppose I don't. So I can do goal C. I want to set the value B five to be minus twenty five thousand. But I am ready to. But मुझे तीस लाख रुपए चाहिए चाहिए because मेरा घर तीस लाख रुपए का है. So I am ready to increase the number of years. मेरा loan का period बढ़ाने को तैयार हूँ मैं. Duration बढ़ाने को तैयार हूँ. So then if I click on OK, B2. So now the number of years will change, and it tells me that I will require a loan for 31.6 years. So just by increasing it, decreasing my EMI to 25,000 from 15 years, my loan period has increased to 31 years. All right. Clear on this? Any questions? Let I can just save this. No, I, I won't save this rather. Then we can move to the next one. The next one is a very uh, simple one. In this case, I have not done much. Suppose you have any any column. Like, you have data, right? Many, you have many many columns. Any column, if you want to take and you want to find out the descriptive statistics, so there is an बहुत सारी चीजें कैलकुलेट करने को मैंने बताया आपको मीन मीडियन मोड स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन वेरिएंस ऐसे बहुत सारी चीजें हैं अब हर एक का फॉर्मूला मैं सिखा सकता हूं बट व्हाई व्हाई टू वेस्ट टाइम यू नो आई डोंट वांट टू वेस्ट टाइम इन टीचिंग यू ऑल द फॉर्मूला सो आई विल टीच यू अ शॉर्टकट व्हाट यू डू इज यू गो टू फाइल ओके एंड यू विल गो टू ऑप्शंस फाइल में यू विल गो टू ऑप्शंस अब डिपेंडिंग ऑन व्हिच वर्जन यू यूज ऑप्शंस कहीं और दिख सकता है बट फाइल ऑप्शंस फॉर्मूला सेम है मतलब स्टेप सेम है और आपको ये ऐसा विंडो दिखेगा इसमें आपको एक टैब दिखेगा एड इन ए डी डी आई एन एस एड इन यू गो टू दिस एड इन दिस स्टेप इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एड इन में जाके यू हैव टू इंस्टॉल समथिंग कॉल्ड एज द एनालिसिस टूल पैक फर्स्ट आइटम होता है जनरली फर्स्ट आइटम होता है बट नहीं होगा फर्स्ट आइटम तो जरा ढूंढ लीजिएगा 
अब यहाँ पे और भी बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो आप यूज कर सकते हैं जैसे पावर मैप है पावर पिविट है पावर व्यू है ये सारी चीजें इंस्टॉल कर सकते हैं आप ओके दीज वर यूज बिफोर पावर बी आई अगर आपके पास पावर बी आई नहीं है तो यू कैन यूज दीज थिंग्स ऑल ऑफ दिस नाउ हैव बिकम स्टैंडर्ड इन पावर बी आई सो यू डोंट नीड दम इन एक्सेल बट एक्सेल में भी ये सब कुछ अवेलेबल है बट यू राइट नाउ आई नॉट टीचिंग यू ऑल ऑफ दैट वेरी सिंपल एनालिसिस टूल पैक ओके दिस एनालिसिस टूल पैक अलाउज मी टू डू डेटा एनालिसिस ओके इट्स इन बिल्ड एड इन है एंड यू टू क्लिक ऑन दिस मैनेज एक्सेल एड इन एंड से गो ओके मत करना पहले ये गो करना गो करोगे तो क्या होगा दिस विंडो विल कम एंड आई विल सिलेक्ट दिस एनालिसिस टूल पैक यू कैन सिलेक्ट वट एवर यू वॉन्ट ओके सो एनालिसिस टूल पैक एंड यू कैन क्लिक ऑन ओके द मोमेंट यू क्लिक ऑन ओके ज्यादा कुछ होगा नहीं जब आप डेटा में जाओगे ये जो डेटा टाइप है ना तो यहाँ पे आपको डेटा एनालिसिस दिख रहा है सडनली मेरा लगता है निकल गया मेरा शायद था लेट मी जस्ट डू इट अगेन ऑप्शंस एड इन एनालिसिस टूल पैक गो एनालिसिस टूल पैक ओके डेटा यहां पे आपको डेटा एनालिसिस का ऑप्शन दिखना चाहिए वो होना ही चाहिए मेरा सडनली गायब हो गया इट वॉज देयर एंड लेट मी जस्ट स्विच ऑफ एक्सेल एंड स्टार्ट अगेन एक बार लेट मी जस्ट चेक क्या होता है ओके सो दिस डेटा एनालिसिस आपको ये आएगा ये टैब आएगा एनालिसिस टैब जिसमें आपको डेटा एनालिसिस ऑप्शन दिखेगा ओके okay, पहले नहीं था ना ये आप जब वो करोगे तो दिख जाएगा ओके डेटा एनालिसिस पैक दिस डेटा एनालिसिस पैक विल हेल्प अस अ लॉट व्हाट आई विल डू इज आई विल जस्ट सिलेक्ट माय डेटा ये मेरा रैंडम नंबर कोई भी कॉलम हो सकता है करंटली इट इज सम स्कोर्स एंड आई क्लिक ऑन डेटा आई गो टू डेटा एनालिसिस एंड आई हैव लॉट्स ऑफ टेक्निक्स अवेलेबल दिस इज अ टूल पैक देयर आर लॉट्स ऑफ टूल्स अवेलेबल the one of the tools is called descriptive statistics so when i click on that data analysis i get a lot of things one of the things which i get is called called as descriptive statistics okay it's all alphabetically sorted so you can go to descriptive statistics and click on okay and the moment i click on okay it will ask me my input range i will select my input range as these numbers okay any column you or row you can row of numbers or columns you can it's it i say it is grouped by columns okay लेबल अगर मैंने सिलेक्ट किया होता था आई सिलेक्टेड दिस बट वी आई नॉट सिलेक्टेड द लेबल्स आई डोंट नीड टू सिलेक्ट दिस टिक मार्क अगर मैं टिक मार्क सिलेक्ट करूंगा तो 82 को वो लेबल समझेगा ओके सो लेबल इज इन द फर्स्ट रो नो इट इज नॉट देयर ओके आउटपुट रेंज आई विल वांट टू आई वांट टू प्रिंट माय आउटपुट ओवर हियर ओनली ओके अदरवाइज इट विल पुट इट इनटू एन अनदर शीट नया वर्कशीट बना देगा एंड आई वांट माय समरी स्टैटिस्टिक्स आई वांट ऑल माय समरी स्टैटिस्टिक्स टू बी हियर ओके कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल ऑफ मीन इज बाय डिफॉल्ट 95% वो क्या है बाद में बताता हूँ वो बाकी सब सिलेक्ट करने की जरूरत नहीं है टाइम टिकिंग ऑन समरी स्टेटिस्टिक्स एंड टिकिंग ऑन ओके ओके सो व्हाट इट टेल्स मी इट टेल्स मी सर्टेन थिंग्स आई जस्ट दिस इज द मीन 81.21 मीडियन 85 मोड 93 माय स्टैंडर्ड एरर इज 4.04 माय स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन इज फिफ्टीन वेरियंस इज टू then there is something called as tortoise and skewness and my range is 42 okay so 42 means 81 ke aage aur piche minimum and maximum ke beech mein so if you can look at the minimum and maximum and you subtract the maximum from the minimum from the maximum you will get 42 so my range is also there my sum is total sum is 1137 and my count is 14 elements all of this has come by just clicking a button i don't need to use a separate separate formulas for each 
okay so this is a very simple uh, way of getting all the statistics simple statistics okay some of these you might know some of you don't know that's okay you can read about it also if you want what is qness what is qtwice but basically jo important wale hai maine aapko bata diya standard deviation 15 standard sample variance to 29 range 42 minimum maximum sum count stand, mean median mode sab aa gaya okay no formula just click a button all right so this is descriptive statistics i'll thoda quickly jata hu main because mereko do teen teen char cheeze aur karni hai time zyada nahi bacha now this is the where you will start in finding interesting this is where you can actually start using it in your daily matlab like, aapke so there is something called as moving averages okay let me show you what it is with a sample okay you can do it with your own data excel sheets agar aapke ghar mein aap aapke paas aapke paas office mein jo jo bhi excel sheets hongi usme bas jo bhi values hongi uske sath kar sakte hain yahan pe maine kya kiya hai ek maine graph banaya hai on the basis ओके ये जो ग्राफ है इफ यू विल सी करेंटली इट इज बेस्ड ऑन टू कॉलम्स पीरियड एंड एक्चुअल पीरियड करेंटली कैन बी एनीथिंग इट कैन बी मंथ मतलब आई कैन हैव पीरियड एज यू नो जैन फेब मार्च अप्रैल मई या आपका जो भी आपका पीरियड हो दैट इज इम मटेरियल तो मैंने यहां पे 12 महीने का लिखा हुआ है 0 टू 11 ओके यू कैन गिव व्हाटएवर नेम्स यू वांट दिस इज माय एक्चुअल वैल्यूज इट कुड बी सेल्स इट कुड बी प्रॉफिट इट कुड बी एनीथिंग इट यू नो सम वैल्यूज सो व्हिच आर चेंजिंग मंथली or in unit time okay so this is changing monthly year. so now agar main isko plot karta hu uh, using a you know a line graph so suppose this is my price suppose this is the price of a product ya stock price could be anything right so suppose it's a stock price it's it's showing some trend now can i be sure that this is an increasing trend or a decreasing trend सी अब ये बहुत आगे पीछे हो रहा है ना स्टॉक इज मतलब एवरी मंथ वो ऊपर नीचे ऊपर नीचे ऊपर नीचे ऊपर नीचे हो रहा है आई डोंट नो व्हाट इज द सो देयर इज समथिंग कॉल्ड एज मूविंग एवरेज कैन आई कैलकुलेट द मूविंग एवरेज हाउ डू आई कैलकुलेट द मूविंग एवरेज बहुत उसका फार्मूला ऐसा है के यू टेक एवरी टू मंथ्स एंड फाइंड आउट द एवरेज दैट इज कॉल्ड एन इंटरवल ऑफ 2 इंटरवल ऑफ 2 का मतलब है यू टेक जनवरी फरवरी उस दोनों का एवरेज यहां पे लिख दो फिर फेब्रुवरी मार्च उसका एवरेज यहाँ पे लिखो मार्च अप्रैल उसका एवरेज यहाँ पे लिख दो सो सो यू हैव टू टेक टू वैल्यूज फाइंड द एवरेज ओके देन टेक द नेक्स्ट टू सब्सिक्वेंट वैल्यूज फाइंड द एवरेज देन टेक द नेक्स्ट सब्सिक्वेंट टू वैल्यूज फाइंड द एवरेज दिस इज कॉल्ड द मूविंग एवरेज विथ इंटरवल टू इंटरवल फोर में क्या होगा यू टेक फोर वैल्यूज फाइंड द एवरेज देन यू टेक द नेक्स्ट फोर वैल्यूज फाइंड द एवरेज देन यू टेक द नेक्स्ट फोर वैल्यूज फाइंड द एवरेज interval 6 is obvious you will take 0 to 5 well, there's six values find the average then you will take from 1 to 6 then you will take 2 to 7 3 to 8 and you will calculate this is called moving averages okay now i can do it with formula but i have a much better way of using uh, analysis tool pack what i can do is i can directly go to data okay in the data i will select एक्चुअली वो जाता नहीं है पता नहीं क्यों जा रहा है ऑप्शन इट इज नॉट सपोज टू बी डन अगेन एंड अगेन ओके मेरे कंप्यूटर में पता नहीं कुछ तो प्रॉब्लम हो गया ना लेट मी सी अगेन क्यों ऐसा हो रहा है <laughs> Suddenly it comes up. Yeah, maybe I'll save it next time. Okay. So what we do now? We will try to solve it with this. So what we will do is we'll just go to this uh, data analysis. okay and i will select moving average i will select moving average and i will click on okay so when i click on moving average my input range okay so i will select my input range sorry 
is this labels in the first row so i'll say yes labels are in the first row my interval i want to set it as four okay i want to have four ka interval and then my output range i want to print it over here in this row and i click on okay okay let me just do it again without the labels moving average i want to select my input row is this okay interval of 4 and my output range is b4 to this is b2 to m2 b4 for m4 okay barabar so now what you will see is the first three values will not come because usko four months chahiye minimum four months for average to appear so 0 1 2 ke liye you will not have any values but from the third month you will, uh, month number 4 you will see values so this is the average 263 285 700 and you will see the graph man already i have plotted it so you will see that gray line which is showing that it is an increasing trend so now you know if this has become flattened you have we are now seeing a increasing trend using moving averages so we know what a trend is in this haphazard fashion jab hota hai na when stock prices are going up down up down up down it's a good way of doing it so again if you want to do it one more time we will do it for interval 2 outline sorry data analysis moving average okay this time i will give it an interval of 2 and change the output range to this row second row and i'll click on okay so interval is of 2 months so now you will see that only the first value is not there because zero month ke liye there is no previous month data to calculate the value so 0 1 the average is 135 One and two average is one ninety five. Two and three average is three ninety, and so on so forth. And if you look at the graph, the orange line is indicating the interval two ka graph. That also is showing increasing trend. Plotting the graph is very simple. You can just select the data and click on insert, and you can select the line graph. So if you select this 2D line graph, उसके फिर variations बहुत सारे हैं मतलब आपको legend side में चाहिए ऊपर चाहिए you know you can do all all of this you can play with it if you want to see the values if you don't want to see the values okay so you can play with whatever whatever you like वो तो charts में आपको आता ही होगा अगर नहीं so you can do all of this whether you want to see the label values or you don't want to see the label values that is up to you. clear just a simple line chart just click karenge to ho jayega select kar okay i just made it before and so that ap apna time waste nahi ho so you can do it similarly for six values of six interval of six also clear moving average samajh mein aa gaya another statistical uh, concept uh, this time i'll just say wait maybe six wala aap log practice kar sakte hain ghar pe is exponential smoothing okay this is it smoothens the curve much more better okay compared to moving averages yes it is the default data analysis pack provided by microsoft maine kuch download nahi kiya hai aapke excel mein aapko inbuilt milega that is why the visual graph i have made right so the graph will help you identify what what you know visually you will be able to see ki aapko kya dikh raha hai average to kuch hai nahi na it is moving around average will just be a single line single line is not a correct thing in a real world ek single average matlab arithmetic average ya mean median mode leke koi fayda nahi hai you have to have a much more complicated view of structures which are moving too much so now this data is moving around up down up down bahut hai अगर ये सिंपल लीनियर प्रोग्रेशन में होता तो आसान होता या तो ये अपवर्ड जा रहा होता या तो डाउनवर्ड जा रहा होता तो आसान होता नाउ दिस इज नॉट डूइंग लाइक दैट इट इज गोइंग लाइक अ ईसीजी यू नो अप डाउन अप डाउन देयरफॉर वी नीड टू डू देयरफॉर द पर्टिकुलर डेटा व्हिच हैज बीन सिलेक्टेड इज पर्टिकुलर ऑफ दिस टाइप ऑल वर्जंस ऑफ ऑफिस विल हैव आप 2007 ऑनवर्ड सब में है 2007 के पहले मुझे याद नहीं है मे बी 2003 में भी था 100% 
उसके पहले मुझे याद नहीं तो अभी उस 2003 और 7 के पहले वाला किसी के पास ऑफिस होगा तो प्लीज थ्रो इट अवे ओके नाउ ओवर हियर व्हाट आई एम डूइंग इज आई एम कैलकुलेटिंग समथिंग कॉल्ड एज एक्सपोनेंशियल स्मूथिंग सेम प्रोसेस इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम कोई कोई डिफरेंस नहीं है आई गो टू डेटा क्लिक ऑन डेटा एनालिसिस and this time i select on exponential smoothing this is what i want exponential smoothing and when i click on okay again the input range i will select 120 to 950 that is my b2 to b uh, b2 to m2 my damping factor is something which is important now what is my damping factor damping factor means how much weight do i want to give to the previous value okay compared to the current average okay for to the current so what i do is the this is the damping factor so now damping factor is that the current value i want to keep it less so i give it 0.3 and then to the previous i want to give it more okay and the output so this is point so the vary this this damping factor can vary between 0.0 to 1.0 iske beech mein lena hai so the good uh, damping factors are in the range of 0.1 to 0.4 ke beech mein okay generally if you want to smoothen something okay high values nahi leni chahiye okay so if i take this and i select the output column 0.3 ke liye ye hai and i click on okay so you will see that it varies along with the actual okay let me do it for point 1 it will smoothen it further so exponential smoothing will work best jitna aapka dampening factor kam hoga okay so giving higher values to uh, higher weightage to the previous uh, values naya value ko aap kam weightage dena to abhi dekhte hain kya hota hai so what we do is we give for uh, out data analysis exponential smoothing okay select the same input range only thing is this time the damping factor i'm giving is 0.1 and i select the output range as my third color third row and i click on okay okay and now with 0.8 it will be much smoother so the yellow one which you will see has the least amount of ups and downs okay so whether you want to follow the actually then you will have a low alpha value if you don't want to follow the actual and you want to follow if you want to smoothen it further your alpha value will increase okay this is good in identifying trends okay when the fluctuations are very high so you can use different alpha values and you can find out ke damping factor kitna hai aapka okay and which one do you think is best okay so let me just show you how the formula works okay Because the damping factor is 0.1, वन यहां पर क्या हो रहा है दिस डी थ्री वैल्यू डी थ्री वैल्यू इज कैलकुलेटेड बाई सी टू एंड सी थ्री का एवरेज नाउ सी टू एंड सी थ्री का एवरेज नॉर्मली जो हमने लिया था वो मूविंग एवरेज था मूविंग एवरेज में क्या होता है दोनों वैल्यूज को इक्वल वेट दिया जाता है नाउ दिस इज अटेड एवरेज सो इन एक्सपोनशियल स्मूदिंग वॉट वी डू इज वी गिव हाई वेटेज to the previous value and low weightage to the current value if my alpha is 0.1 so 0.1 means i am giving 90% weightage to the current value which is 240 and i'm okay sorry uh, 90% weightage to my previous value which is 150 and i'm giving very less weightage 10% weightage to the current value so the current value suddenly agar kuch change ho to 
आई डोट टू गिव सडनली बिकॉज आज सपोज मार्केट एकदम सडनली ऊपर चले गया तो आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू चेंज माई एवरेज सो आई वॉन्ट टू कीप माई एवरेज बेस्ड ऑन माई प्रीवियस सो दैट इज वाई वी कीप द एवरेज लो सो बाई गिविंग नाइंटी परसेंट वेटेज टू द प्रीवियस वैल्यू ओके एंड सिमिलरली इट विल कीप गोइंग अहेड सो यू विल गिव नाइंटी परसेंट ना इन पॉइंट एट में क्या होगा रिवर्स हो जाएगा पॉइंट एट में यू विल फाइंड दट सी टू इज बीन गिवेन ट्वेंटी परसेंट वेटेज एंड सी फाइव इज गिवेन एट्टी परसेंट वेटेज so we will we will keep giving okay this average a higher weighted so just let me just give another an example over here so when i calculate this g5 g5 gives 20% weightage to f2 and 80% weightage to f5 नो इट विल नॉट बी मूविंग एवरेज बिकॉज ये क्या हो रहा है ये अपने एवरेज को लेके चल रहा है थोड़ा सा फर्क है दोनों में एक बार ऑफिस देखा था it's a simple average do you see the formula over here it's a simple average of previous and current so 250 is an average of 380 and 120 in dono ka in dono ka average hai 250 so 330 and 120 ka average has been come to g2 and h2 ka average which is different from the एक्सपोनेंशियल स्मूदिंग एक्सपोनेंशियल स्मूदिंग क्या करता है प्रीवियस वैल्यू लेता है मतलब इट टेक्स 295 एंड 120 एंड इट गिव्स हायर वेटेज टू 295 एंड लेस वेटेज टू 120 जनरली इफ माय अल्फा वैल्यू इज हाई ओके सो व्हाट हैपेंस ओवर हियर इफ आई लुक एट 255 255 में क्या हो रहा है इट इज टेकिंग द एवरेज ऑफ G5 एंड So it takes the uh, average of G5 and G2 to calculate my H5. So my H5 is calculated as the average of G2 and G5, but G, not the same weightage. So G2, if my alpha is high, I will give more emphasis on my previous alpha, uh, average. Okay. So you can do look at the formula and you will be able to get it. this exponential smoothing is far more better way of understanding you know uh, trends compared to moving average moving average is one way of understanding exponential average is better if it is highly fluctuating the trend is easily seen in a exponential smoothing okay um, last couple of things correlation and regression so correlation is between uh, any two parameters or three parameters what is the relation so generally uh, it can be done for any three variables agar aapko stock prices ke beech mein correlation find out karna hai ya factors between stock prices and any other factor so you you should have three yahan pe mere paas teen rows hain stock a stock b stock c i want to find out whether they are correlated to each other whether their prices are correlated to each other okay what i will do This is a suppose let's say I, I make it a table. कोई परख नहीं पड़ता table बना दिया इसका. Now table नहीं भी बनाया तो चलेगा. Don't worry about it. Okay. What I will do is I'll go to data, data analysis. So the correlation coefficient will tell us if the correlation coefficient is positive one, that means they are perfectly correlated. If it is negative one, that means they are perfectly Not correlated, negative correlation. मतलब अगर एक बढ़ेगा तो एक घटेगा. And if it is zero, that means there is absolutely no correlation. But generally we never get these exact values. We get anything between plus one to minus one. कोई number आता है. अगर वो plus one के नजदीक है, that means they are correlated. अगर वो 
माइनस वन के नजदीक है तो वी से देर परफेक्टली मतलब दे आर नेगेटिवली को रिलेटेड और अगर वो जीरो के नजदीक है तो वी से देर दे आर नॉट को रिलेटेड ओके दैट इज द बेसिक कंजम्पन विच वी मेक सो वी डू वी सिलेक्ट को रिलेशन एंड वी क्लिक ऑन ओके को रिलेशन में वी वॉन्ट टू राइट एन इनपुट रेंज ओके सो दिस इज माई इनपुट रेंज इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सिलेक्ट विद द स्टॉक आई जस्ट सिलेक्टेड ओके माई लेबल्स आर इन द फर्स्ट रो and my data is in column wise so, so i will select column wise data agar row wise agar aapka data arranged hai to you will select rows okay the output range i will select in the same file that i want to print my output here on uh, a8 and then i will click on okay so automatically ye mujhe correlation bata raha hai between my stock a stock b stock so stock a and stock a are definitely 100% correlated बराबर है ना वो तो होना ही चाहिए स्टॉक बी इज को रिलेटेड विथ इट सेल्फ एवरी स्टॉक इज रिलेटेड को रिलेटेड विथ इट सेल्फ वन 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 बट स्टॉक ए विथ स्टॉक बी दिस इज को रिलेशन ऑफ स्टॉक ए एंड स्टॉक बी स्टॉक ए एंड स्टॉक बी द को रिलेशन इज पॉइंट वन नाइन विच इज वेरी क्लोज टू जीरो दैट मीन्स दे आर नॉट को रिलेटेड स्टॉक ए एंड स्टॉक सी द को रिलेशन कोफिशियंट कम्स आउट टू बी पॉइंट नाइनटी वन विच मीन्स दैट दे आर Strongly correlated. Point ninety one is good. Agar point ninety five ke upper hota, then we would say it is very good. Okay. And stock B and stock C is point one zero. That is again very close to zero. So again, we will say stocks B and C are also not very correlated. So what we can only find out is that stock A and stock B ke beech mein there is some positive correlation. Okay. There is positive correlation because it is point ninety one, closer to one. Okay, so when you want to find out the co correlation between any two things, we need to find out the co uh, correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient, if one ke nazdi kaega, so we say it is positively correlated. Negative one ke nazdi kaega, we will say it is negatively correlated. Zero ke nazdi kaega, we will say they are not correlated. So currently, we can only say stock A and stock C are correlated. Baki, we cannot say anything about the others. any question with correlation blank row of c kaun sa c blank row do you mean these cells do you mean the cells in green वो तो फर्क नहीं पड़ता ना सी स्टॉक एंड स्टॉक बी का कंपैरिजन करना है तो स्टॉक एंड स्टॉक बी का कंपैरिजन इधर हो चुका है तो इधर करके फायदा वापस नहीं इट विल बी द सेम वैल्यू आई विल हैव टू रिपीट द सेम वैल्यू अप फार्मूला सेम है ना तो व्हेदर स्टॉक इज कोरिलेटेड विद स्टॉक बी एंड स्टॉक बी इज कोरिलेटेड विद स्टॉक ए एक ही बात है सो वी डोंट नीड टू डू इट अगेन ओके इफ यू कैलकुलेट इट यू विल गेट द सेम वैल्यूज The last one is regression. So regression is generally both uh, logo ko kabi kabi difficult lagta hai. I will try to give you very simple terms in regression and uh, formula to kuch hai hi nahi. Okay, we will directly use uh, again data analysis tool pack. Abhi yahan pe kya hai? We want to find out ki if this is my sales. So this is the amount of sales, quantity of sales. So if a product sales is whether it is dependent on price of the product and the advertising expenditure okay so when we give advertising and uh, expenditure we will generally say that uh, quantity sold should be higher if we spend more If we say price reduce करेंगे तो probably quantity sold should be higher, right? ये तो basic normal हमें uh, understanding है. So we know that price and advertising have an effect on quantity sold. Okay, so it's a very simple uh, example, but you can take product uh, columns which you don't know whether they are having an effect or not, and regression will help you find out whether they are having an effect on the uh, dependent variable. So right now we want to find so the variable which we want to predict. this is called the prediction variable it is called y and y is calculated on the basis of x and there can be multiple x in this case there are two x's price and advertising we say price and advertising ke upar dependent hai the value of y so y is equal to a function of x we say 
Okay, so we, we call it that y is equal to the function of x. In this case, x is x1 is price, x2 is advertising. Okay, so now I want to calculate a regression analysis. Now, what do I do? How do I do regression analysis? Again, very simple. I go to data, click on uh, Give me one step very quickly. I'm just trying to do this. Click on data. Okay. But I know why not Anyways, so I click on data, and now what do I do? I click on data analysis. And I select the regression analysis. I click on OK. I say my input value y is this quantity sold. My input x values are price and advertising. Go ahead. So I select both the columns, price and advertising columns. I say that I have labels. Yes. Okay. My confidence level 95% hona chahiye. Theek hai. Output range. I will say uh, start from uh, a13. Okay. And I will say I also want something called as residuals. Residuals, kya hota hai? you can if you want if you want you can even do residual plots. Okay, plot will give you a graph also. So I'm, I'm, I'll explain what they are. So residuals, kya hai? residual plots, kya hai? and I'll click on OK. Baki options you can explore aram se, but the ones which you okay. So ye mera. residual plots and everything here i will come to the resolute plots once now what i want to the most important thing to check is the r square value okay bahut sada data mein jaane ki zarurat nahi hai what we want to check is the r square value if this r square value is greater than 95% 95% matlab 0.95 ke upar if it is more than 0.95 then we say it is significant that means the they are dependent okay we that means using regression i can predict the value of the amount of quantity sold using this regression methodology agar ye value nahi aa rahi hai that means my input factors are not correct i need to change them okay the other important thing to note is the significance how confident i am on my uh, analysis this significance value is again coming out to be 0.001 anything bit less than 0.01 is good ye to 0.001 hai so which is much better okay so any so your regression significance f should be small it should be as small as possible your r square value should be high high means 0.1 ke nazdik uh, so 1.0 ke nazdik jana chahiye anything greater than 0.95 is good so if these two values if this is greater than uh, 0.95 and this is less than 0.01 we say that it is a good indicator or it is a good predictor okay that my price and advertising are good predictors of quality uh, quantity sold also if it is not suppose i don't get then yahan pe mujhe identify karna chahiye kiski p values zyada aa rahi hain अभी तो पी वैल्यूज तीनों माय प्राइस एंड एडवर्टाइजिंग दोनों की मेरी पी वैल्यूज कम है मतलब दे आर लो अगर किसी की ज्यादा है सपोज आई एम डूइंग दिस एनालिसिस विद 10 वेरिएबल्स देन इफ इफ माय वैल्यूज आर हाई देन आई विल हैव टू चेंज दिस आई विल आई कैन ड्रॉप सम ऑफ दिस कॉलम सपोज प्राइस का वैल्यू बहुत हाई आ रहा है एंड माय आर स्क्वायर वैल्यू इज कमिंग 90% या 80% देन आई कैन रिमूव द प्राइस एंड आई कैन ओनली टेक एडवर्टाइजिंग एंड चेक ओके यहां पे तो बराबर आ रहा है इसलिए प्रॉब्लम नहीं है both these values p values jiska high hoga wo drop kar dena chahiye to amongst these two advertising ka p value high hai okay regression is for prediction you know if you want to do forecasting on parameters when you have a single variable to predict then this is linear regression okay so univariate regression univariate analysis ke liye ek acha hota hai 
ओके नाउ ये तो हो गया कि वेदर यू शुड यूज मतलब वेदर रिग्रेशन विल वर्क और नॉट बिकॉज रिग्रेशन डज नॉट वर्क फॉर एवरीथिंग यू कैन ट्राई इट आउट एंड यू कैन सी वेदर नाउ यू विल सी द रेसिडुअल प्लॉट इन टर्म्स ऑफ प्राइस and the residual plot in terms of advertising now what i want to do is i'll just so this is my predicted quantity based on regression method ke agar mera price 2 dollars hai and advertising spent 2800 dollars hai so what is my predicted quantity as per regression analysis is this so what i will do is i'll just copy this quanti actual quantity sold i'll just copy it and i'll paste it over here for you to refer to it easily so what i say is that i predicted using regression that the quantity sold will be 8523 if my price is 2 dollars and my advertising spend is 2800 dollars if my price is 5 dollars and my advertising spend is 200 dollars my regression analysis model predicted 4400 and 76 to be the quantity sold but my actual sold is 4700 to ye jo actual aur iske beech mein jo difference hai wo mera residual hai So if you see 8,523 minus 8,500 is my negative 23. 4,476 minus 4,700 is my 223. So this is where we will. So actual minus the predicted will give me my residual. So this is what my residual is. Okay. And if you can just put these values together and see that they are very closely mapping to each other. That means my predictions are good. This way I can predict. Okay, I can predict future values also. Okay, so future value predict करने के लिए. Okay, I'll just give you a second. I have I have I have kept the formula for you. Also, if you want to predict the future value using regression model. सॉरी गाइस थोड़ा सा लेट हो गया है आई जस्ट फिनिश इट ऑफ ये लास्ट पॉइंट है एंड देन सो यस द फर्स्ट टेबल इज माय पास्ट डेटा सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज ओके ये सब मैंने लिखा हुआ था आपके लिए दैट रिग्रेशन कोएफिशिएंट का कैलकुलेशन कैसा होता है क्वांटिटी सोल्ड इज इक्वल टू ओके आई विल डू इट अनदर टेबल एक सेकंड i'm just doing it again for you all uh regression okay y value is this the x value is this my labels are there my new i'll put it in a new worksheet and get the residuals let me not plot it right now something i selected wrong question my y value is only this much yes and my x value is this much but i need to wrong values like that okay so now if you look at the summary report okay i can give you the formula for prediction okay so my formula for prediction is very simple ye jo hamara coefficient hai intercept 8536 okay 8536 माइनस एट थर्टी फाइव इंटू प्राइस प्लस दिस इज बिकॉज दिस इज प्राइस राइट इंटू प्राइस प्लस पॉइंट फाइव नाइन टू टू इंटू एडवर्टाइजिंग इज माई फॉर्मूला फॉर क्वांटिटी सोल्ड ओके दैट इज हाउ यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग एट फाइव थ्री सिक्स 
minus 835 into price plus 0.592 into advertising. This is how you will calculate these values. These values here have come here. Okay. Now, if I take the actual uh, values from here, this table, and copy it, and if I put a scatter plot, you know, scatter plot will allow me to check. कि ये वैल्यूज कितनी नजदीक हैं या दूर हैं, ओके? आई कैन जस्ट गो टू एन इंसर्ट एंड आई कैन गिव अ स्कैटर प्लॉट, स्कैटर प्लॉट इज़ दिस दिस नंबर, दिस डॉटेड टेबल। व्हाट यू विल सी इज़ दैट द ब्लू डॉट्स एंड द ग्रे डॉट्स, व्हिच इज़ ब्लू ब्लू डॉट्स आर माय प्रिडिक्टेड वैल्यूज � I don't need to care about the residual right now. If my blue and my gray dots are very close to each other, some of them are overlapping also. That means my prediction is very good. So I can predict using that formula. Okay. So for example, यहाँ पे मैंने predict किया है कि if I sell the if the price equals four dollars and advertising equals three thousand dollars, you might be able to achieve a quantity sold of six thousand nine hundred and seventy two. If this is True, then my prediction for Ageka, I can be very confident about my predictions for the future. All right. So this is how regression works. You need to know the R square. You need to know the significance of F, and you need to know the coefficients. And using the coefficient, intercept coefficient plus price in into the variable plus the variable coefficient plus the into the variable will give you the formula. So this is the formula. Okay, this Excel sheet is with you. You can read it and you will understand the whole thing. Not a problem. So that's it for today. Yes. We, uh, for my next session, I, uh, which will be day after tomorrow, I will uh, require you to, if you want to do, if you want to do along with me, then you will have to do two things. One, first of all, on your computer, you will have to install a software called Orange. I will send you the link in the WhatsApp group. And the second thing will be that you will have to keep your laptop available and you will have to uh, watch the session on the mobile. Then you can do it simultaneously. If you have both things on your laptop, then it will not happen. Yes, the Excel sheet. I'll I'll WhatsApp it to you all uh, as I end the session today. After ending the session, I'll send it. Okay. Bye bye, everyone. Take care. Yeah. So thank you, thank you, sir. Very very insightful session for all of us. We really learned a lot of Excel tricks, a lot of data analytics. We obviously unlearned many things which we were doing wrong in past. We may. A look upon that and obviously we re relearn our school and college days of statistics thank you for uh, making us relearn all those uh, i think we were uh, not connected with all that uh, statistical things which i think it's time to relearn and get into data analytics so i think uh, amazing and wonderful session i think everyone uh, i hope everyone has enjoyed the session and really we learned the practical usage in excel and now i think now it's up to us how we use in our business or in our day to day work uh, things so i think thank you so much once again uh, looking forward uh, everyone for the next session tomorrow at 6:30 please do register on the link provided on the whatsapp if at all by any chance someone is not yet part of the whatsapp group you can ping either of uh, them either shweta or uh, radhishyam or myself and we will add it to your whatsapp group thank you once again everyone for the patient hearing and sparing the additional time for the today's session as well thank you thank, thank you so much yeah. thank you sorry for the delay sorry for the delay here yeah. no, i think we can end the session thank you yeah, yeah please end the session Do I need to give the? Do I need to give it? Give the control back to somebody?
yeah yeah so i think uh, mishra ji would be there or you can just uh, select the end the session should i end the session directly that's it yeah 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 that's that, that. Uh, end webinar for all okay i'll do that yeah yeah, yeah. thank you thank you thank you so much